Art in Five, Solowit. Solowit was a renowned American artist known for his contributions to the conceptual art movement. He was born in 1928 in Hartford, Connecticut, and grew up in New Britain. Lewitt studied at Syracuse University, where he earned a Bachelor of Fine Arts degree in 1949. Lewitt began his career as an artist in the 1960s, a time when the art world was undergoing significant changes. It was during this period that conceptual art emerged as a major new movement challenging traditional notions of art and creativity. Lewitt quickly became a leading figure in this movement and his work would go on to have a profound influence on the course of contemporary art. One of Lewitt's most significant contributions to conceptual art was his embrace of the idea that the concept or idea behind a work of art was more important than the final product itself. This idea became a cornerstone of conceptual art and set it apart from traditional art forms, which focused more on the physical creation of objects. Lewitt's work was characterized by its simplicity and geometric forms. He used basic shapes such as squares, circles, and triangles, arranging them in patterns that were often repeated throughout his work. He also explored the use of color, using bright, bold hues to create a sense of energy and movement in his pieces. One of Lewitt's most famous series of works is his wall drawings, which he began creating in the 1960s. These pieces were large-scale, site-specific installations that covered entire walls with geometric shapes and patterns. Each piece was unique, designed specifically for the space in which it was created. Lewitt created hundreds of wall drawings throughout his career, and they remain some of his most significant and influential works. Lewitt's work was not only influential within the art world, but also had a significant impact on design and architecture. He was commissioned to create many public artworks, including murals, sculptures, and installations, which are still on display in cities around the world. In addition to his art, Lewitt was also a prolific writer and thinker on the subject of art and creativity. He wrote extensively about his own work and the work of others, contributing to the ongoing conversation about the nature and purpose of art. Lewitt continued to create art until his death in 2007, leaving behind a legacy that continues to inspire and influence artists and thinkers around the world. His emphasis on the importance of concept and his use of simple geometric forms have had a lasting impact on the art world, challenging traditional notions of what art can be and inspiring new generations of artists to push the boundaries of creativity. Art in 5 Solowit Anne Truitt, born in 1921 and passing away in 2004, was an American known for her minimalist sculptures and abstract paintings. Truitt's work explores the relationship between color, form, and space, and is characterized by its clean lines, geometric shapes, and subtle use of color. Truitt began her artistic career as a painter and later transitioned to sculpture. Her early paintings were often monochromatic, featuring large, solid color fields that created a sense of calm and contemplation. As she delved into sculpture, Truitt continued to emphasize simplicity and precision, using wooden forms that she carefully painted with multiple layers of acrylic paint. One of Truitt's most notable series is the Early Series, which consists of vertical wooden sculptures that stand at human scale. These sculptures, often referred to as columns, are meticulously crafted and painted in vibrant yet restrained colors. Truett believed that the verticality of her sculptures evoked a sense of the human presence and created a dialogue between the viewer and the artwork. Throughout her career, Truett's work underwent a gradual evolution. While her early sculptures were characterized by their smooth and polished surfaces, her later works featured more textured and weathered finishes. This shift reflected her exploration of the passage of time and the imperfections that come with it. Truett's artistic practice was deeply influenced by her personal experiences and reflections. She often drew inspiration from her own memories, emotions, and observations of the natural world. Her work also reflects her interest in spirituality and the transcendental, as she thought to create art that resonated with a sense of inner harmony and contemplation. Anne Truitt's contributions to the art world would have been widely recognized and celebrated. Her minimalist sculptures and paintings have been exhibited in major galleries and museums around the world, and her unique approach to form and color continues to inspire and influence contemporary artists. Truitt's dedication to simplicity, precision, and the exploration of personal expression has left a lasting impact on the field of abstract art. 
Richard de Bencorn, a luminary in the realm of American art, remains an artist of profound influence, celebrated for his remarkable abstract and figurative works that encapsulated the essence of California landscapes and the human experience. His artistic odyssey unfolds as a narrative of exploration, evolution, and a deep-rooted connection to the surroundings that shaped his creative vision. Born on April 22, 1922, in Portland, Oregon, Di Bencorn's formative years were colored by an environment ripe for artistic exploration. His family's relocation to San Francisco during his childhood opened the doors to a rich cultural tapestry, immersing him in the vibrant artistic malo of the Bay Area. It was here, amidst the bustling artistic scene, that de Beckhorn's early artistic inclinations began to germinate. Enrolled in the California School of Fine Arts, later known as the San Francisco Art Institute, Richard was exposed to an electric blend of artistic movements. The city's diverse influences, ranging from the expressive gestures of abstract expressionism to the nuanced representations of figurative paintings, nurtured his burgeoning talent and laid the foundation for his artistic trajectory. The Bay Area, with its varied landscapes and a fusion of urban vibrancy and natural beauty, became an integral muse for the Bencorn. His surroundings, characterized by the play of light across the coastline, the expanse of the ocean, and the organic forms of the landscape, seeped into his consciousness and would later manifest vividly in his art. Dibencorn's artistic evolution was marked by an insatiable curiosity and a relentless pursuit of innovation. Transitioning seamlessly between periods of abstraction and representation, each artistic phase was a testament to his introspection and experimentation. His renowned Ocean Park series, renowned for its abstract depictions of the Californian landscape, stands as an enduring testament to his mastery of color, form, and spatial relationships. The artist's profound connection to the Californian landscapes imbued his works with an emotive quality. Whether through abstract interpretations or figurative representations, de Bencorn's art eloquently echoed the essence of the West Coast. The interplay of light and shadow, the vast expanses of space, and the emotive depth of the surroundings. Beyond his artistic contributions, de Bencorn's legacy resonates in his influence as an esteemed educator. His teachings and insights have left an indelible impact on subsequent generations of artists, carrying forward his artistic ethos and multifaceted explorations in the art of worlds. Richard de Bencorn's upbringing, steeped in the vibrant cultural landscape of the Bay Area, laid the groundwork for a artistic journey characterized by innovation, introspection, and an unwavering communion with the landscapes that inspired his transcendent creations. His legacy persists, captivating and inspiring art enthusiasts, scholars, and aspiring artists worldwide. Richard's artistic evolution navigated a fascinating trajectory marked by a dynamic interplay between abstraction and representation, innovation, and an unwavering commitment to exploring the complexities of form, color, and spatial relationships. De Bencorn's early artistic expressions in the 1940s and 1950s were influenced by the vibrant artistic milieu of the Bay Area. Initially aligned with the abstract expressionist movement, he embraced gestural abstraction, experimenting with bold brushstrokes and vibrant colors. This phase, characterized by his Berkeley series, reflected a dynamic energy and an intuitive approach to painting. However, de Bencorn's artistic path was not confined to one style or movement. His creative journey was marked by a significant shift during the late 1950s. Moving away from pure abstraction, he embarked on a transition towards representational art, embracing figuration and landscapes. This shift led to his celebrated Ocean Park series, created from the mid-1960s until the early 1990s. The Ocean Park paintings, named after the area in Santa Monica where de Bencorn lived and worked, epitomized a remarkable fusion of abstraction and representation. These compositions, characterized by geometric shapes, interlocking planes, and luminous fields of color, conveyed a sense of contemplation, space, and light. They became a visual diary of sorts, capturing the artist's emotional responses to his environment rather than literal depictions of specific landscapes. De Bencorn's evolution was a testament to his unwavering experimentation and the synthesis of different artistic approaches. He deftly navigated between the realms of abstraction and representation, continuously refining his visual language while retaining a distinctive, recognizable style. His paintings revealed a sense of balance between freedom and control, inviting viewers to engage with the subtleties of color relationships and spatial depth. 
In later years, the Bencorn's artistic evolution continued to evolve subtly, emphasizing a more meditative quality. His works exuded a sense of quiet introspection, offering glimpses into his contemplative process while retaining the vitality and luminosity that characterized his earlier compositions. Richard de Bencorn's artistic evolution was a testament to his innate ability to transcend artistic boundaries, seamlessly transitioning between abstraction and representation. His commitment to innovation, coupled with a profound understanding of color and space, secured his place as a pivotal figure in the annals of American art. Richard's creative process was a layered and introspective journey that encapsulated his artistic ethos, marked by a profound exploration of form, color, space, and emotional depth. The Bencorn's creative process often commenced with contemplative observation. Whether facing a blank canvas or the California landscapes that surrounded him, he immersed himself in quiet observation. This introspective approach allowed him to absorb the nuances of his environment and internalize the interplay of light, shadow, and space. Before translating his observations onto canvas, de Bencorn often engaged in sketching and preliminary studies. These sketches were not just mere preparatory exercises, but served as vital explorations of composition, form, and spatial relationships. Through these initial studies, he honed his ideals and delineated the foundational elements of his artworks. When facing the canvas, de Bencorn approached painting with a blend of intuition and deliberation. His process involved a series of spontaneous gestures juxtaposed with calculated decisions. Layer by layer, he built compositions, allowing each stroke to interact with the previous ones, creating a dialogue between form and space. Color played a pivotal role in de Bencorn's creative process. His palette ranged from muted earth tones to vibrant hues, applied with an intuitive understanding of their emotional resonance. Through subtle graduations and interplays of color, he imbued his works with depth and luminosity. Texture also featured prominently, he experimented with various brushstrokes and techniques to create tactile surfaces that added richness to his compositions. De Bencorn's creative process was iterative. He continuously elevated and revised his works, often reworking areas or allowing paintings to evolve over time. This process of editing and refining was integral to his method, allowing him to capture the essence of his emotional responses and refine the visual language he sought to express. Central to Di Bencorn's creative process was the delicate balance between freedom and restraint. He navigated between spontaneity and control, allowing the painting to evolve organically while exercising a meticulous sense of composition and structure. As he approached the completion of a painting, Di Bencorn engaged in reflective contemplation. He evaluated the emotional resonance and compositional integrity of the piece, seeking a resolution that captured the essence of his initial observations and emotional responses while maintaining the integrity of the painting's structure. Richard's creative process was a harmonious interplay of observation, introspection, intuition, and deliberate execution. His approach was a testament to his dedication to exploring the complexities of form and emotion, resulting in artworks that encapsulated a profound depth of expression and a vibrant dialogue between the artist and his surroundings. Barnett Newman, born in 1905 in New York City, emerged as a prominent figure in the abstract expressionist movement. Renowned for his pioneering approach to color field painting and his significant contributions to the post-war American art scene. Newman's upbringing was steeped in art and culture. His father, a successful businessman and art aficionado, exposed Newman to the world of aesthetics, fostering his early interest in art. However, Newman initially pursued a career in the humanities, studying philosophy at City College of New York and later attending the Art Students League. His exposure to philosophy deeply influenced his artistic sensibilities, instilling in him a profound interest in existential thought, spirituality, and the human condition, which later would manifest in his artistic vision. During the 1930s and 1940s, Newman struggled to find artistic voice. He worked as an art critic, writing for various publications, and was an active participant in the vibrant art scene of New York. His encounters with fellow artists, including Mark Rothko and Adolf Gottlieb, and exposure to European modernism, particularly the way of Piet Mondarian, played a pivotal role in shaping his artistic development. Newman's early years were marked by experimentation and a search for a distinctive artistic language. Influenced by the intellectual and philosophical currents of his time, he sought to create art that transcended representation and delved into the realm of pure abstraction and metaphysical contemplation. The turning point in Newman's career came in the late 1940s and early 1950s when he began to create his iconic series of paintings known as Zip Paintings. 
These works featured vertical bands, or zips of color, often set against expansive fields of vibrant hues, embodying Newman's quest for spiritual and existential truths through the simplicity of form and color. Newman's early influences, rooted in philosophy, European modernism, and his exploration of existential themes, laid the groundwork for his radical departure from representational art. His formative years as a thinker, writer, and artist paved the way for his later contributions to the abstract expressionist movement, marking him as a trailblazer in the evolution of modern art. Barnett Newman's early artistic evolution was shaped by a convergence of diverse influences, ranging from philosophical concepts to encounters with fellow artists and exposure to various artistic movements. Philosophical and Intellectual Influences Newman's immersion in philosophy, particularly existentialism, profoundly impacted his artistic trajectory. His interest in existential thought, especially the writings of philosophers like Friedrich Nietzsche and Immanuel Kant, instilled him in a deep contemplation of fundamental human experiences, spirituality, and the nature of existence. These philosophical explorations directly influenced his approach to art, leading him to seek abstraction as a means to convey profound universal truths beyond mere representation. Encounters with fellow artists Newman's interactions with artists within the New York art scene, including Mark Rothko, Adolf Gottlieb, and William de Kooning, were just instrumental in his artistic development. Discussions and collaborations with these contemporaries encouraged Newman to push the boundaries of traditional art forms and inspired his pursuit of a unique visual language that went beyond conventional painting styles. Engagement with European Modernism Exposure to European modernist movements, particularly the works of Piet Mondrian and Kazimir Malevich, left a lasting impression on Newman's artistic sensibilities. The stark geometric abstraction of Mondrian and the spiritual depth of Malevich's preparism influenced Newman's conceptualization of art as a conduit for spiritual and metaphysical expression. Transition to Abstraction Newman's early works were marked by experimentation, attempting to break away from the representational art. His engagement with Surrealism and Expressionism in the 1930s revealed a desire to move beyond traditional figurative painting toward a more abstract and symbolic form of artistic expression. His piece, Ornament the First, 1948, considered his breakthrough work, showcases a starky minimalistic approach featuring a single vertical zip or stripe that became emblematic of his subsequent artistic language. The amalgamation of these influences, existential philosophy, intellectual discourse, encounters with contemporaries, and exposure to diverse art movements propelled Newman toward his signature style of color field painting characterized by monumental, singular geometric forms and intense color contrasts. His pursuit of abstract expressionism aimed not merely to represent but to evoke profound emotional and spiritual experiences, illustrating the profound impact of philosophical and artistic influences on his artistic evolution. Barnett Newman's artistic style is synonymous with color field paintings and a radical form of abstraction that aimed to evoke profound emotional and spiritual experiences. His style, characterized by monumental canvases, adorned with large swaths of pure color and vertical bands he termed zips, became emblematic of his artistic vision. Use of Color Newman's mastery lay in his use of color as a vehicle for conveying emotional depth and spiritual resonance. His canvases predominantly featured intense, solid colors applied in expansive fields, creating a sense of vastness and presence. In works like Verhirkus Sublimis, 1950-51, vibrant hues of red evoke a sense of passion, while the simplicity of the color itself becomes the subject, inviting complication. The zip, perhaps the most distinctive element of Newman's style, is the vertical band or zip that traverses the canvas. These zips, usually contrasting in color to the surrounding field, act as focal points, interrupting the vastness of color and inviting viewers into an intimate dialogue with the canvas. The zip is not merely a compositional element, but a profound statement, symbolizing a spiritual presence or a gateway to another realm. In works like Who's Afraid of Red, Yellow, or Blue, for... The zips demand attention and create a sense of tension and dynamism within the space. Scale and Monumentality Newman's canvases often exhibited a monumental scale, inviting viewers to immerse themselves physically and emotionally in the painting. The sheer size of his works, combined with the expansiveness of color fields and the vertical zips, created an overwhelming presence that aimed to evoke a sense of sublime. In pieces like Anna's Light, the vastness of the canvas becomes an area for contemplation and introspection. Minimalism and Simplicity Newman's art aimed for a reduction of elements to the most essential. His compositions were stripped down to the fundamental elements of color and form, imbuing his works with a sense of purity and simplicity. Simplicity, the intensity of color, and the arrangement of zips created a depth of meaning and emotional resonance. 
Newman's artistic style, characterized by bold colors, monumental scale, and the enigmatic presence of zips, aimed to transcend the visual realm and evoke profound emotional and spiritual experiences. His technique of color field painting and the iconic zips not only challenged traditional notions of painting, but also invited viewers to contemplate the transcendent and the sublime within the simplicity of his canvases. Several works stand out as pivotal in Barnett Newman's career, each contributing significantly to the evolution of his artistic vision and cementing his legacy within the realm of abstract expressionism and color field painting. One Meant One Considered Newman's breakthrough piece, One Meant One marks a pivotal moment in his artistic career. This work introduces the iconic vertical zip that would become synonymous with Newman's style. The singular vertical band set against a vast field of muted color embodies Newman's quest for a pure and direct expression, heralding the birth of his distinct artistic language. Its significance lies in its minimalistic yet profound impact, paving the way for its subsequent explorations of the zip as a powerful symbol and virtual element. This monumental canvas exemplifies Newman's pursuit of the sublime through color and form. The expansive red field interrupted by five vertical zips of varying widths invokes a sense of awe and contemplation. The title translating to Man, Heroic, and Sublime reflects Newman's aspiration to create art that transcends the ordinary and connects with the profound and spiritual. Verhirikolkla's Sublimus embodies Newman's ambition to evoke intense emotional and metaphysical experiences through the simplicity of color and form. Who's Afraid of Red, Yellow, and Blue for? This painting, part of a series exploring the relationships between colors, exemplifies Newman's exploration of primary colors and their interaction. The large-scale canvas features vibrant red, yellow, and blue hues, each separated by distinct zips. The work challenges viewers to confront the purity and power of color and their emotional resonance. The series underscores Newman's dedication to investigating color as a means of creating spatial and emotional tension within the canvas. Each of these works holds immense significance within Barnett Newman's body of work, representing pivotal moments in his artistic evolution. They exemplify his commitment to pure abstraction, the exploration of color and form, and the quest for the transcendent and sublime. These paintings continue to influence contemporary artists and remain emblematic of Newman's profound impact on the trajectory of abstract expressionism and color field painting. Barnett Newman not only was widely recognized with artists during his lifetime, achieved significant posthumous recognition, and contributed profoundly to the art world. Newman's works have been prominently featured in major exhibitions posthumously, solidifying his place in art history. Retrospectives at esteemed institutions like the Museum of Modern Art in New York, Tate Modern in London, and Stedijk Museum in Amsterdam showcased his groundbreaking contributions to abstract expressionism and color field painting. These exhibitions provided audiences with comprehensive insights into Newman's artistic evolution and underscored his significance within the art world. Despite a lack of formal awards, Newman's art has received critical acclaim for its groundbreaking approach. His pioneering use of color, exploration of scale, and the development of the zip as a formal element in painting garnered admiration and attention from art critics, scholars, and subsequent generations of artists. His influence on the minimalist and color field movements, as well as his role in redefining the possibilities of abstract art, solidified his reputation as a seminal figure in 20th century art. post thoughtfully Newman's work has been commanded substantial value in the art market. His paintings, characterized by their monumental scale of an iconic zips, have achieved considerable prices at auctions. The recognition of the art market reflects the enduring demand of Newman's artworks and their significance in the realm of contemporary art collecting. Newman's cultural legacy extends beyond accolades and exhibitions. His contributions to the evolution of abstract art, especially color field painting, and his commitment to exploring the spiritual and metaphysical through art have left an indelible mark on the art world. His emphasis on the purity of color and form, as well as his pursuit of the sublime, continue to inspire artists and provoke contemplation among art enthusiasts worldwide. The significance of Newman's Pothalamus recognition lies in the acknowledgement of his innovative contributions to abstract art, the continued relevance and influence of his artistic vision, and the enduring demand for his works in the art market. These acknowledgments affirm Newman's status as a visionary artist whose impact transcends his lifetime, leaving an enduring legacy in the annals of art history.